Good evening. I wrap Stain with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening of Thursday, the 21st of March, 2024. All right, my friends. Today, the yin yang was happening. I thought it would happen in stocks. It was currencies that it happened in. I don't know if you were paying attention to what went on, but the Swiss National Bank lowered their interest rates. So they're the first rich, well-developed country to go the other way. So the race is over. Remember, I had been talking, who's going to be the first? And this is like now the demarcation point. You've set one up now so that they've gone. Now you start looking who else is going to go. The other way we went it was today with Turkey, where they went up 500 basis points, 5% in their repo rate. And we saw the Bank of England today hold steady, but very important. Two hawks who had been voting that they wanted hikes now, they went back into the majority, so now they're getting more set, ready to start seeing when do they start voting for the cut. The U.S. will sit tight. In tonight's market letter, I show the remaining dates that we have of FOMC meetings the remainder of the year. And it's interesting because I don't think in the month of November, right in front of the election, the Fed would want to cut a rate. So I start giving ideas as to when, if the Fed's going to begin the cuts, when's the most likely time, how they'll get to them, maybe a pause, if they're going to do the three that they talked about. So that's the important thing. Remember, Apple keeps getting itself into nothing but problems here. Uh, one of the things you saw Tesla down today, NVIDIA up $10. I didn't like the action in Amazon that it couldn't hold on to the early gains. That doesn't mean I'm bearish, but I certainly was disappointed with what I saw there. Uber's still acting very good against this uh, aiding level. No good movies out yet. Maybe it's going to take Godzilla to kick that uh, AMC up. Microsoft. They're starting to talk about now the money they'll make off of uh, the $30 a month that they'll be soon charging to get the AI and products. And they have a new computer coming out now where AI is built into it, so it's not, not clunky. Now it works with the chip and goes like that. So this should be fascinating. That'll be the first of many to come out. In Schlumberger, you made a new high for the move and you sort of stalled out here, only uh, gaining four cents on the day. The pattern is still one of higher lows and higher highs. When we look at where the market's at, the battleground is to stay over, if it can, the 200-day average. And when you look at the Bollinger Bands, you can see how the market at first was running them. Now it's moving to the right-hand side. It needs to continue to get bullish information or it will probably see a pullback to at least that 200 100 day average would not surprise me. And momentum, as long as you're embedded, that's not bearish. I think tomorrow there's going to be a lot of opportunities in a number of markets. The setups are starting to look that way, especially if you keep the embedded readings. Now, DKNG, uh, I told you that it looked to me like a breakout. Well, what do you think I'm watching today all day? Of course, you know, you've got your March Madness on. And as that's happening, the betting is going on. I was prepping you. I thought this might be a move that happened. And now that you've got two moves where you close literally at the highs of the day and each one higher than the other outside of the range, I think you look and you say, okay, we've made a, we've made a breakout. Breaks in the market certainly look interesting to buy on deeper breaks. I would not buy, and I, I don't tell clients to ever buy, over a Bollinger Band. In UGA, this is the gasoline fund. This is a, a pullback that is probably, if it uh, stays embedded, let's make sure it did. Both numbers were over 80 today. Both numbers on Wednesday were over 80, and both the day before were over uh, 80 as you can see. So you got your Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday guarantee. So you got your embedded reading. I think the market will still be bought by the pros. They'll bail, in my opinion, if you get the red line closing under 79. Barring that, I think they'll buy this break and they'll be looking to see can the market get itself going. Gasoline energies today were all hurt because the dollar came roaring back once we saw the Swiss National Bank cut rates Many currencies weakened right away after that, and the dollar made back everything it lost yesterday. So it was a pretty crazy day. 
in XLF, in the financial services, come on, you know, as long as these interest rates are staying this way, as long as the economy is this strong and the Fed's looking for it to be stronger, hard not to be bullish. And again, two days outside of the Bollinger Band at the top part of the ranges, tell me that you'll have a hard time staying underneath these break lows. So the 18 day average is where I'm looking for the support on pullbacks in the market. Ideally, I'd like to see an embedded reading. I just see you overbought in the industrial sector here. But again, two days outside of the Bollinger Band with each one of the numbers in the top part of the range tells me one more time. The 18-day average, probably a major support area in the market. CME Group, yesterday when you fell to the lower Bollinger Band, it, first of all, I think we had a failure, I said, and I thought that would be a support zone. If not, maybe down to the 100-day average with it. But the market just stinks. That's the only way I know how to say it for that chart. In the uh, consumer discretionary, you have the same pattern. Both markets closed outside of the Bollinger Band yesterday and today at the top part of the ranges, which means, again, I'm going to look for support at the 18-day average of closes, but I don't like when my clients, I wouldn't tell you to buy an overbought market. In the home builders, well, you can see your breakout. They're trying, again, to overbought. So 18-day average, 18-day average, 18-day average. That's what I'm looking for now for support on the pullbacks. You give me an energy sector like this, I'm even more bullish because you got the embedded reading. So the first pullback on this, I'll be talking to clients and telling them I think that makes sense. And in the gold market, here's something that happened. And you got to keep your eyes on this real good right now. The market today, what was it able to do? So if we take a look, today, the both numbers are over 80. Now, let's take a look at yesterday what happened. Both numbers came back over 80, and the day before, they lost it. So you're back to fully embedded. So what I think the traders will do is they'll buy a break, I think that they'll bail if you get another reading under 79, and barring that, you're opening the door for the possibility of the 207 level. Yes, it was a whipsaw move on that. They do happen. Silver's the opposite. Silver's been stronger than gold, and silver today lost its embedded reading. The odds now favor that this market is going to go back to its 18-day average to try to figure out what to do next. Copper, on the other hand, maintains that embedded reading, and I think the pros will buy this tomorrow. Obviously, I'll be having a lot for my clients to talk about. In TLT, you're still in an oversold market that's trying to stay underneath the 100-day average and work its way down to the lower Bollinger Band. When you look at UUP, the dollar index, just to give you an idea. So yesterday, the market gets beaten up pretty good. It's down half a percent, 13 cents. Today, the market comes up as up 19 cents and up six eighths of a percent, almost 70 percent, almost seven tenths of a percent and knocking on the door here. Why? Because you had a huge shift take place with the Swiss National Bank cutting rates. And now the question is, does the euro want to follow suit and start down? Right now, the support's the 100-day average, resistance the 18, the battle's on right now. Which way do these go? What we are seeing is something to pick up and understand. The countries that seem to be cutting the rates, be it the yen, not cutting, but the yen actually tried to stabilize the rate, but the yen, the Swissy, the euro, there's problems. Is they're cutting, the market's thinking their currencies will weaken. So it's something you got to think about and how to play. I'm going to be all over this tomorrow. I told traders today that I think tomorrow is going to be a big day to enter the market on breaks in a number of these areas. I'll be covering it first thing in the morning. I'll record at 9. The videos get posted shortly after. It's not just these. I cover much more than all this. It's just a sampling of what we do. There are no major U.S. economic data reports tomorrow. However, at 8 in the morning, Fed Chair Powell is speaking on an event, and I'm sure the press will cover that. We'll see what he has to say about anything at this point. You might want to take a good hard look at how this is all working out. I'll give you the trade ideas, and then over the weekend, I'll be looking with you at the weekly charts. And the weekly charts have been very interesting recently, and it's actually some of the trade ideas that have been coming up are off of that more than the daily. But I think tomorrow's the dailies.
irapstein.com under the word research. Go there, take a look. I think you'll like it. You have a great day. By the way, you can also click the uh, icon up here. It'll take you right there. You have a good one.